Bigo. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. It's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 to 9 where we talk sports. Um, before we jump into our discussion tonight, a big shout out to uh, Errol Hola, the guy from Nelson Street. He said he just love my two guests and I, I know he just communicates with one of them because he tell me last night he going and call him. Also to Chris and Alicia from Dong Point, some of our best um, clients or customers, I should say, and some avid uh, viewers of this program. We have them again tonight because by public demand, you know, people always call to ask when them two guys coming back. I don't know what's the reason because it can't be their looks or nothing. Eh? So I, I don't know what the reason is. But let me introduce to you uh, Dennis Allen, the CEO of um, Wired 868. Dennis, it's <laughs> no, no, a not, pleasure. Not, not Wired 868. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next guy. Rep 868. Rep 868. <laughs> My apologies to Lasana Ligwood. My apologies. Um, and... Uh, Co-conspirator. The co-conspirator. Yeah. Uh, Chris Conspiracy. Conspiracy theorist Chris, at large. Chris, the best once red, I, the best yes, looking yes, red yes. man on the planet. You know, once I slow down, I talk all kind of stupidness in the world. Errol, hey, yeah. Errol, thank you very much. Um, we will send the commission fee by um, yeah, yeah. direct bank transfer. Right. I remember, remember, remember. <laughs> rep. Rep 868 worldwide. My apologies. Uh, yeah. How are you going to put a big man like you in place of Lassana? Oh, yeah, no, man. No, 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 no. Don't hey. forget we have, we, we, have, we have the bird man. Yeah, well, I do. I, mean, I guess that's why he was on the... On the right, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to talk on a, a number of things. We want to touch a little bit on football. But we also want to talk a bit about some articles that was um, recently published by uh, Dr. Cliff Bertrand with regards to athletes and their treatment. And that's something we always talk about here on this program with these guys about, you know, some of the the hardship that our athletes face, especially those um, in the track and field business. Um, but let's start a bit with the, with, with the football. I know we have um, Lasana standing by, but, um, well, the Where regime, do we start? The regime has... Resigned. The regime has collapsed. Capitulated, has collapsed, right? right? Folded. Not London has fallen, but the TTFA has fallen. So um, where do we go from here? I don't know if you want to go straight into Lasana and get his input sure or you want to jump in um chris um or well, dennis well first of all uh thanks thanks for joining us on the um, phone lasana i know you do like mornings so <laughs> no problem Glad um lasana library editor-in-chief of wired 868 um first things that i want to start with is we're not going to talk about what the kinds of maggots on the bottom on the side of the road. We ain't talking about that because that's a dead, dead, dead dog. <laughs> what we have to talk about is what's the next move for TTFA yeah, we... under normalization and in the shadow of Infantino's yeah. specter yeah. of FIFA. Is this a James Bond flick? What we have to do is we have to figure out how can we contribute to what's next, right? That's where I would like to, to point the conversation, right? So... Um... From my point of view, I think, yes. Um, in a so short I, term, I, I just want to see what's happening short term. Uh, we have a qualification, a possible chance of qualification to the World Cup, and I want to figure out what will be the actual mechanism by which we get some football started so that we can actually have a, a realistic chance of maybe getting past the first round or second round of qualification as it is. Wait, is that comedy show? I thought it was a sport. <laughs> you gotta be kidding, man. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Qualification for World Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. Let's have a Birdman, what's the word? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, first of all, it, it isn't so much a we right now because FIFA has taken control of the TTFA and they, they're going to have control until at least or oh, for the longest until about March 2022. So that means this entire World Cup qualifying campaign will be run by FIFA through its local employees, which will be headed by uh, by Robert Haddad. You know, we're not sure if it's out there. the other two employees, Judy Daniel and Nigel Romano, will be back. Presumably they will. Uh, we're not sure if they're going to add to um, well, anyone else to the list. I mean, we, we saw some speculation in, in the, the, the Trinidad Guardian recently about uh, Anton Cornell and, and Anthony Sherwood, but that, that, that's not confirmed. No word from FIFA. So it isn't really a we right now. We don't 
there's no board. CDSA the has no board. Um, the stakeholders, um, I mean, have no say. There's no mechanism under which football stakeholders could um, impose themselves on the normalization committee. The committee responds only to FIFA. So it's their show. And um, what we could say from between March to about, let's say, June, July, while the normalization committee was in total control, they did almost absolutely zero. You know, I, I think um, we've seen complaints from coaches, from players, and so on, which had nothing to do with William Wallace and his administration. They simply couldn't get any word at all out of Harder than the normalization committee. We understand uh, they, they, they never um, really showed up at the office to, to manage affairs there. And um, the ideas we've, we've had, the little ideas we've had from them so far, in terms of adjusting the debt, and I think Harder's idea was, you know, we'll ask the government for some money, and we'll ask FIFA for some money, which isn't... Um, you know, much much brain science there, really. Um, so what do I expect in in that period of time? I don't really expect much. You know, I expect us to be to be treading water until we get to the point where uh, election um, uh, is called, uh, and and then maybe we we kind of try to restart football in some way. You know, a, a couple of that, uh, points, less honorees there. Um, first of all, Chris got a phone call just before showtime. Um, yeah. I got a phone call before showtime. Or I, I verify the fact that uh, the rumors are still rumors. Neither of those uh, persons, Anton Cornell or Anthony Sherwood, have been confirmed to be part of the normalization committee at this time. That's for sure. Um, there's also another... Um, I suppose another uh, difference in the in the... And when is the Normalizations Committee tenure to end? Is it going to end in March or is it going to end in October? Um, you know, are they saying it's two years from when the, the FIFA or when it was accepted by the TTFA or is it two years from when they were appointed? So this, these are some of the things that seem unclear with some of the people in local football at this time. Whether I'm not saying that that's a fact or not. I'm just saying it seems unclear to a number of people in local football that the, the tenure might last two years from now. Uh, it, 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 you see, that's the thing. If we buy the storyline, if we buy the plot line that the normalization committee was, was done under a legit, authentic, genuine um, reasoning, it means that the reasons why that was in place in the first place, still exists. So until the normalization committee addresses that 70 or whatever million TT dollars debt, then all of it was just mama guy in the first place. Right? The other thing is, um, and this is something that Lasana has talked about on his platform for quite some time, is the FIFA club licensing, which has prevented um, the Trinidad and Tobago Pro League teams from participating in other other um, Caribbean and regional tournaments. So th those are as th those are questions that are begging answers still, regardless of who is in front of the 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 um, the, the, the mics when they um, when they call this meeting, whether it is Haddad or Wallace or whoever. Those are questions still unanswered. And I think we want to thank you for your contribution this morning as we continue the discussion and going on. No problem. Um, I think you brought some points there that, I, again, it's always a case of we don't, you know, a lot of times we are speculating and, and a lot of information is, is thrown out into the public that it's speculative and we don't quite understand the full ramifications. So I think you brought some clarity to that. So thank you very much. And no uh, as usual, we hope to see you again or hear from you again, man. All the no best. No problem, guys. Yeah, um, take care. Uh, sorry for putting this uh, guy as <laughs> your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thanks again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Lasana, what people need to understand about Listen, I like and the Wired 868 platform because there are a couple of people who have been super trolls, mm. right? There, there's the Wired 868 group on Instagram, not Instagram, on Facebook. But then there is another subgroup, which is a private group, 
where people more or less discuss some of the ideas and some of the things that have been published. Mm -hmm. And listen, has been getting trolled. There's no other word for it. By people who have absolutely no substantive inputs in either the direction of the conversation or in the facts. And I don't want to name names, but these guys need to understand some, something. Publishing in 2020 in modern digital age, sometimes you get things wrong. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you get things wrong. But it doesn't mean that you can't go back in and edit a post, edit a, 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 a page, or edit your website. It, it, these things are liquid, fluid things that are happening. The news is an organic thing. 2020, why did it succeed? Is by far the standard for journalism in the country. And I've that's worked true. at all that's three true. newspapers. That's true. That's true. I've worked at all three. I've worked at two radio stations. Right? I've worked at two television stations. What? Right? I ain't, I ain't thinking my own, fluffing out my own feathers here. But you what I'm sure? saying is, what Lasana Liebert is doing is establishing a high water mark mm -hmm. for the quality of journalism, investigative journalism especially. Not with respect to what Mark, Mark Basant is doing as well. I, I, yeah, I want to give, Mark, Mark, I wanna give props to Lasana too, because I think a lot of times when I read the articles, um, whether I agree or disagree, it brings an informed view. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for informed views so well, that you can... he, Lassana, to be honest, has been the, 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 the fighter for, for Trent and Tobago football from yeah, day one. Right. Since, no. you, since in the days of Jack Warner, Lassana really... Yeah, well, he, bat he battled up with Jack. And he never... He never, never blink. He never blink. Never blink. No. Let right. me go from Lassana, you get right. enough bligh. But what I want to talk about, Lassana made a very important point that we seem to have passed by. He is saying clearly that the normalization committee is taking directive strictly from FIFA. So we have a normalization committee. They take directives from FIFA. That means that the head of the South Zone and the head of the Central Zone and East Zone and North Zone and all these other people and all these other zones that normally come together for a board meeting of the TTFA and normally have some influence in what is happening with the football. What is their now role? And this is the question I want to ask. The what is, is their role? What, what role do they, and if there is a role for them, how is that role now transferred? Because obviously if, if the TTFA isn't operating like it normally did, and the normalization committee has five people and they are operating football, what is the role of all these? I guess that is an, a question that we just have to wait when everything is rolled out. No, I are, can tell uh, you what the role is because right, they've already rolled over. Mm. <laughs> what they've done after after William Wallace and them and, and everyone, they oh. held the emergency meeting, the extraordinary general meeting. They rolled over. That's what they've done. So they've removed themselves from any responsibilities. So why should Mr. Haddad or anybody else go to them? Go to them? You understand? And what have they been doing before? The reason we reach where we reach now, yeah. and the reason why what Chris said at first is so laughable, mm -hmm. where are we going? <laughs> Do we go and qualify for nowhere? Where's the momentum that is going to be captured to get that, that, that football team into anywhere? Yeah. Bad mind? Okay, bad mind, we might beat USA in a swamp in, in, in Atoboldan with bad mind. One goal. Brilliant goal. But you can't build a whole seasonal qualification on just yeah, bad yeah. mind alone. Come on. <laughs> Let me end up bad mind <laughs> on a good mind here. Segway, boy, George. Yeah. I like that segue. That's, that's <laughs> we, we, we have seen some articles being published recently here. Mm. And one of the articles was written by Dr. Cliff Bertrand. Mm -hmm. And they were saying mm. that <laughs> the... But if that is so, I would applaud Brian Lewis for using the initiative that sporting administration should cut down on their basically spending or free trips <laughs> and use that money more to assist athletes. And a number of athletes were named Bledman, um, Richard Thompson. These guys are married with family. Um, calendar is in Jamaica. How are these athletes mm. making out? Ooh, so I would think that 
You talking, you talking big, you talking You have enough deep. time in this segment yeah, to jump in you, here? Yeah, we just time. tasting this thing. We just because still have plenty to take with this football. There's a order for this <laughs> main course, George. You had to let me know because I really, I yeah, come me, down here and I like ready for them. Tons. There's the grocery buy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There's, but, the, there's the meat on the bone. What we're trying to figure out here now is, if that's a suggestion by, by Brian, it, it's commendable. Because Indeed. I think that sometimes when you watch uh, organization and they go, a team is going to any tournament, the amount of baggage I'll, going. You see, I'll give you one, and this is from football. So I remember speaking with, uh, I was having a conversation with a national footballer who is in class with me, and he made the point that he can remember at the hotel, the officials asked him to stay in the five-star hotel while they were being put in the three-star hotel. Mm -hmm. And the officials amounted to five or six officials and the cost of their hotel, the, the five-star hotel for the five or six officials might have come up to the same amount as the hotel bill for the 15 or 16 players. Mm. So we have had a culture in Trinidad and Tobago where our officials, mm. you know, in the past, and, and, I, and I'm not going to go forward and say it's still continuing, but certainly in the past, we have had a culture where our officials have deemed themselves to be bigger than the sport, bigger than the administration, and they have been part and parcel of a culture where being an administrator, you're, you're kind of come like government ministers, even though you don't deserve it, you want to buy a new car every two years. You know that kind of thing? So it was kind of like in the same mentality. Okay, I'm a government, I'm, I'm, I, I've taken all this stress or wherever it is, so I deserve to get a five-star hotel and a free trip to the games. I ain't going and do nothing. I just go in and, you know, I remember, you know, and this is going way back, um, Gene Samuel went to an, an Olympics and we, the Federation sent a manager that couldn't pump his tires, didn't know how to do anything. But the man wanted that trip. You know, so we, the, it's a culture that's been endemic in our sports administration. Um, and we need to get rid of it. We need, to, we need to clear it out because it has never been productive. It has always been counterproductive. So from that regard and in that regard, I agree with Brian Lewis. That doesn't necessarily mean that I totally agree with his statement, but in that regard, in terms of the culture, we need to clear it out. We, 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 can't, we can't continue with this thing, so. All right, well, I know I want when, to, when, I want when to, I want to give, back, I want George, give Dennis I go and jump. all the time to talk. I yeah, he went on my shut up. I'm leaving that right We're take a break, and when we come back, we'll get Dennis um, yeah, 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 reply yeah. On, on, the, on this topic. So viewers, we'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back, viewers. And um, Dennis, before the break, well, we heard Chris, um, his views. But this is a topic that I think we have touched on numerous times mm -hmm. on the show, right? And it's more prevalent now because of, you know, it, it's, it's out there. What's your view? You know, a lot of what Chris said is very important too, but um, we need to understand certain things. The director, let me explain something what's going on here. This is a pair of Pumas that I got from Entry A's. Right. This is a shirt that I got from Entry A's. I'm going to tell you what's going on with this shoe. This is a size 10 and a half men's. Let me tell you who gave me this, this shoe. Ooh, right. One of the officials took this shoe from her own personal um, Things of shoes, mm. and she gave me the shoes. Not is that, because. It's a woman shoe, are you using it? Yeah. No, it's a, it's, it's a man's shoe. Okay. But what I'm saying is. Sex. This shoe <laughs> is a gift from one of those same officials that Chris was just talking about there. A lot of people feel that sports in Trinidad is a paid thing. No. There are about maybe a handful of paid, and most of them are stipends, huh? There are a handful of paid officials in Trinidad and Tobago sport. 99% of Trinidad and Tobago sports administration is done on a voluntary basis. And not just voluntary in the sense that you're not getting paid. Voluntary in the sense that it's coming out of your pocket. Yeah. So when an when a, uh, official goes on a trip, first of all, most of the officials who go on trips are paid by the global federation, the global governing body, not the local governing body. So no athlete 
is being harmed when you see Brian Lewis fly on a plane going to a, a SIG conference or a, a IOC conference or anything like that. No um, Trinidad and Tobago runner is not having a proper pair of spikes when you see Ephraim Serret fly on a plane on entry is business. The global governance of sport is done by by these voluntary professionals. So telling people that they can't get a trip, Chris, I'm sorry, is ridiculous. Because why am I going and volunteer for four years, knowing that I had to take money out of my own pocket? You know what's the, the stipend to get to a, a, a board meeting? What board? $75 is the stipend for board meetings. Of the... I ain't going to call names, All right. but we could figure this thing out. In some, in Ooh. some, in some cases, there's no stipend. That's there is most cases. I'm not going to tell you. It, it, no it has two well-paid, well-funded organizations in Trinidad and Tobago. Track and field and football. Cricket. So That's really different. That's different. I ain't going to get into cricket for the simple reason cricket have some gray areas that Blend. I personally find reprehensible. So I ain't going to talk about cricket. I like to talk about what I know about too, George, yeah, right. right? But you see, track and field and football, it, you can't blame these people for, for saying, boy, like this, this thing. I know something here, U Sport, that's the place that this was published. Yeah. You were the editor of the U Sport magazine, right? I wouldn't go so far. For about so far. 10 minutes. <laughs> Because I remember I laid it out. <laughs> right, I, I, we, did, we, did, we, we, we did. We did a couple of, uh, uh, of, of issues of it's a, it's sport a good print sport magazine. platform. I, it I, is I, a good sport platform. But we have to be very clear about what Dr. Bertrand had said about these things. First of all, anybody going to use sport on Facebook, you will notice two things. One is a very small audience. And two, reading this thing, this is a troubled mind. He start off with, the right word, a troubled mind, asking for repentance. But I don't think the troubled mind he's referring to here well, who's is, is Brian mind? Lewis's mind. Right. I think it's Dr. Bertrand's <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, enough respect to the, 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 the man. The man has his palmers. It's he fantastic. is a former Olympian. Olympia, yeah. He is a former um, national medalist. And he, he has kudos and enough credential. But my brother... It's time to step away from the bile and the vitriol and to start learning about how to build a community. Attacking people like Brian Lewis, Ephraim Serret, and everybody else. He's talking about Brian Lewis taking his son yeah. to go to MJP. What is that? What is that about? So, so first of all, Brian Lewis's son, he's, he, he, he tries to say this, um, this young man is not podium potential. This young man has represented Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know if it have another team that he wanted this kid to, to, to be on, but Trinidad and Tobago rugby team is Trinidad and Tobago rugby team, right, Chris? Yep. So if it, I don't know if it had another one that had an A team, a B team, a C team, or whatever. I mean, the man put on this, this kit. Mm -hmm. Right? And the reason I didn't wear my Rep 868 gear is because I respect what Puma has done for Trinidad and Tobago, track and field and Olympic committee, right? By putting this on. So this is the only brand you go see me repping outside of my brand. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I respect what they're doing. When Adidas was sponsoring the team, I would have put on an Adidas kit. I ain't get none. But I got a shoe. I did get. That. Yeah, I got a shoe. I get, I, get, I, get a whole, I get a whole kit. Thank you, Teresa at TTOC. Listen, this, this, this. Yeah, that. Oh that, my God. I, so much there are a couple of inaccuracy. Them. I am waiting for, for Dr. For the announcement that Dr. Um, Bertrand will get a letter because <laughs> this is actionable. But then again, I'm just a Bush lawyer, right? You are a Bush I lawyer. I am a Bush lawyer. But hold up, before we go there, one of the things, this, even though it's, it's, it is related and not related at the same time. So I always remember when we won the 4x4 four four goal at World Championships in 2017. You know, there was Lalonde coming in. He had a fantastic run. Every, I could watch a replay of that a thousand times. My heart will burst with joy. I feel to bust down tears. It's fantastic. Great. My question about it was, less than a year later, I was in the States, and I remember reading one of those members of that team talking about the fact that he was having a hard time finding monies and different things. And 
I remember thinking that how could a person who is a world champion, he's part of a world champion athletic team, be struggling? Um, and what, why are we not looking at how we avoid that? Is it that we don't have a marketing thing in place for him? Is it that he himself doesn't have a marketing um, system in place for himself? You know, for example, he is the member of a world championship team. Why is he not using it to market himself and receive money? Because I would assume that even at the low end of a Nike deal or Adidas deal, he'll be making 20 grand US. And that's the low end, and that might be the Chris, low end. what we talked about just the other day, we have a world record holder, Nico Paul. You ever see any ad? Nothing. That's true. You ever see Universal Cornflakes come and say, hey, let me put this little good-looking no, fella that, nothing, that, nothing, on a nothing. box? No, that, that's something I, I, I mentioned many times already. Eh? Um, Kishon. How many ads you see Kishon on? None. Right? Um, and, 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 and you have to start to wonder if it's, uh, and I'm not blaming Kishon or his management. I'm asking the question. I'm genuinely asking the question. How much of it is maybe Kishon not doing enough? How much of it is corporate TNT not responding to the... But do you think it's the responsibility of corporate Trinidad? If I see... I think it's the responsibility of all Kishon, of them. right? And it's a gold medal. I go in film first because I believe that that can enhance my business mm. to a certain level, to have him... Okay, look, for instance, look at um, Brian Lara, right? Mm. Lara does the ad for the... Um, Glasses, glasses, right? Okay. So, I would think that corporate should really try to get what's best for them. Look at Sunil, Sunil Narayan. Mm -hmm. He has his own brand now. Mm -hmm. Look at um, Bravo. He has his own brand now. Mm -hmm. And, I mean... Whatever these guys pick up on the sideline, you know, they dig up in the couch and they get a little piece of, of, of cornflakes that dropped from breakfast three weeks ago. It's still something. Is it that these guys have a better marketing team? It's a that different methodology. It's a different yeah. access to market. 20 years ago when Brian Lara was in his prime or whatever the case may be, what was... You had to access media through, some, through an audience that mm -hmm. was owned by a publisher. Today, you can directly access your own media, yeah. your own audience. So that paradigm shift has not really been explored enough in my mind. By the athletes. Right? We're, today, on the your drive down here, Chris and I, we were talking about a, a food show that a friend of mine does, right? Dawi, QD, um, eat a food. When you look at eat a food, it, it's, it's not a big following on, on YouTube, right? Eat a food, one word, right? But what it talks about is our Trini food. They're not talking about how to, to, to roast lamb or, 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 or some other kind of thing in some U.S. style or French cooking or any kind of thing. We're talking about how to make good dal and rice, how to make a good pale out, not, not too dry, not too wet, but wrong. You know, these are how to make, uh, uh, um, this is goat toba we are now, how to make a Guinness goat stew. All right. You understand? Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that what I'm talking about. George, but how did eyes they, light you up. Feel they, you feel they wait for George, some, George, some, George, some, light some somebody in a big mega yeah, station yeah, to come? Yeah. No, no, no. They went, they pick up the camera and they say, hey, we want to do the yeah. show, boy. But here's another part of it, too. Um, you asked about corporate. And I was giving Tay the story that in my very first job, I was a merchandiser and my boss was a cyclist. And he told me, Hey, work is work, cycling is play. And I never forgot that because if, and I always look back at it and say to somebody that he or people his age are now the people that are in a lot of cases at the head of corporations or on, on the boards of corporations or maybe government things, right, in, in that range. And, and a lot of them were sports people or might have played sports, certainly at the highest level in Trinidad and Tobago. And they still don't see sports as a business. They are still seeing sports as something you just do for a while, and when it's done, you go and you get a real job. And so corporate Trinidad has not responded to Keyshawn or to our world championship team or to Dylan Carter 
the way they should because they're still not seeing it as business. Okay. We are not, they're not seeing it as an investment. They're not seeing it as if I spend a million dollars in sport, I am saving myself as a business X amount of money. I'm saving the country X amount of money. The government, the government doesn't have at any point in any form or fashion a tax break for people getting into sport business. So, you know, Minister of Finance got up there and talked about, well, we will throw some money at sport and if you, if you invest as a sponsor, if you, if you send money, we will give you a 100% tax break. But it still is, if you invest as a sponsor, none of it talks about if you invest in it as a business. None of it. So we have people, like Mr. Bertrand has talked about in the article, that need more than just a little, hey, it was good, let me, um, no, we need, to, we need to understand that these people can make a contribution to our economy. You know, in the early days, most of our Trinidad footballers used to be hired by Petrotrain or Trintop or Shell. Right. Do you think... Or the army or the, or the, police. Or the police. Do you think now that some of our athletes, I'm not saying you're going to just push everybody inside there, but once you represent the country to us at the, to the highest level, right, do you think that they should be given priority to, in a job in maybe if it's no, in, and in I, I, and or, 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 or something? The answer to that is no, because we're still going back down the same road, which is we are trying to make athletes workers and then athletes. We have athletes who are professional athletes. That's their job. No, I'm talking after you retire. You know? No, but what I, what I keep saying is, for example, um, my partner Earl Ja. Earl, big up to you. Um, we're talking our conversation, and I, and I was telling Earl, listen, why it is that people, parents of footballers, can't see that after football there, is a, there are many avenues for a guy who plays football at Super League level or even Pro League level in Trinidad and Tobago to go into football as a career. He could start an academy. He could be a coach. He could end up being a coach at a university away. Right and earn money. He could. He, there are so many. Do you think that's so? That's as easy as you say. It isn't easy. I'm not saying it's easy. What I'm saying is it's possible, but it's never talked about. We don't. We don't advocate it. We don't. We don't encourage it. We don't have a system that allows somebody who is coming out of pro league to see their way. Because of the state of football in Trinidad and Tobago, I don't and, think and that, that field we should go into at all. <laughs> you know, we're talking about football and thing and and. But once even again, in athletics too, it, Once again, it's I want to re return to the division of the potter on the side of the road with Magas coming out. Let, let's stop football for a second. Now. Right, okay, okay. Right, let's talk about sports that moving and going places. Yeah. Tenille Campbell. Cycling. Right? Olympic bound cyclist. Just competed in the world championships. Mm -hmm. New right? contract. New contract. Her team, right? The team she's leaving, Valka Travel Service, is currently ranked... 13 in the world in the women's tour. They're not a women's um, tour team, huh? they're a continental team. So they're in like League Two then. Mm -hmm. She is moving to the top four team, of top four team, Mitchelton Scott. But what is important it, for the football fans, imagine you're leaving Sunderland to go Real. That's what it is, right? Or maybe Barcelona. Basel, Basel. Oh, not, so, not so real. Maybe but let me minute. tell you what is happening. Do you see any little snack bar with Tenille on it? Do you see any yeah. kind of breakfast cereal? Do you see any bank instrument saying, you know, hey, Tenille, because that's a sure bet. You're not seeing nothing. Yeah, we don't market her. We, we completely void yeah, of but ideas. We're coming, back, we're coming back to, is it the responsibility of the corporate trader? Of Tobago, course. Or is it the marketing I, I be, rep of the athlete I believe not it, aggressive enough? I no, believe see, it's, it's, the, it's the responsibility <laughs> of all of the parties. I think the, the rep of the athlete or the management team of the athlete has a responsibility to make mm. sure the athlete gets marketed or mm. has a market and, and their brand is out there. I think corporate trend art needs to embrace and look for local heroes. We have a society that you get up in the morning, you read the papers, somebody shoots somebody, this, whatever. You always want, the, we quick to put up pictures of some little bad boy who went here and shoot here, whatever. 
But we, that same corporate Trinidad is not looking for local heroes to put into the face of young people and say, here's a Tennille Campbell who can show you, who is showing you what you can do if you put hard work into it. If you, here is a young footballer, Levi Garcia. Here is a, a young athlete running. Here is a young swimmer. Here is a young, they have some new basketballer from point 14. She's going you away. We're talking about Africa, yeah. Louis, just now. Right? Um, we have, um, we have a young man in the NFL. I didn't even know about it. He was born here, but he grew up in the States. None of these things are taken and targeted by corporate Trinidad as a means of boosting our heroes in Trinidad and Tobago. Who are they? Who are the heroes that the corporate Trinidad and Tobago right now are pushing? Not one sporting person. You all again, my vex. All again, my vex. <laughs> we got to take a break. When we come back, we want to talk a bit about the girl from Point. Africa Lewis. Right. And I also want to find out what is the difference between sports and culture because we realize that most of the soccer artists are, are, have ads on television. But <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard and ACTN. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. in the last segment. Mm -hmm. Things get hot just now, now. When you look at television, you see so many of the Nyla Blackman and the Bungie Garlands and all these guys doing ads for corporate Trent Tobago. Mm -hmm. We don't see, with the exception of um, Brian Lara, and Atlantic has something with Pollard and um, mm, Andrew Lewis, a couple Andrew of them, Lewis, a couple of them in the it. The former cricketer girl um, from Maroon. Marissa Aguilera. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, you don't see anything. Well, let me let me let me give a quick insight into what I noticed, right? TT Game Plan, the platform, right? Rep eight six, the home of Rep eight six eight. Online, so you could find it Facebook, Instagram, wherever, wherever. I ain't just saying that so that people could go and click, but you could go and click. What I'm saying is that when I put up a video, mm -hmm. right, the top performing Instagram video for me for the year was a video that I did using Roxanne Gialdo's i95 sports report and some photos that I have uh, received from. Um, Africa's father on WhatsApp, and I also shot some video, which will be coming here, and you, of course you will have it too, mm. with an interview with Africa and her sister Nairobi, who are two, I'm six feet tall. These girls, when they're around me, I feel like a smooth, right? Um, recently, um, you're sure you're Brian, six Manick, Brian Manick posted a photo, Brian Manick is 6'1", Next to nah, these guys, he looks Brian, like a... Brian is about 6'1". Brian, Brian is about 6'1". Brian is taller than me. Yeah, I look Brian in the eye, man. Nah, Brian is about 6 feet. <laughs> Brian at, I a, a, a what challenge I'm saying is that, that. What I'm saying is that when I posted that, I got 900 and I think about 50 views on Instagram TV. When you look at the most recent so-called Zessa video, it's already over 600,000 views on, on YouTube. And you know whoever watching that playing the whole song. So they get the full play. What I'm saying is that we are a culture, we are a, a, a community that has been programmed into certain responses to certain types of media. We like rabs. If we come and we start to fight and I tear off Chris Jersey, this show will go pshoo. <laughs> we could make it you happen. You understand? It, go, it could happen, eh? It could happen. But we didn't want to, we didn't want to see what's going on under this jersey right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You think you want to see it, eh? But, but you, you don't, don't want to see yeah, it. Yeah, to see but what my point is this. YouTube you see rabs? You see, much. we like too much, much bacchanal and yeah. bangarang and rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to hear about culture building. Look, somebody posted a, a video, supposedly, allegedly, is some um, foreign-based soca artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thousands, yeah, thousands yeah, of yeah, shares, yeah. over 2,000 yeah. shares as of this morning. Mm -hmm. People coming and asking me, who is that, who is that? They don't even know who the person yeah, is. Yeah. Are they good? But they I know they eat pineapple. <laughs> 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 pineapple on pizza. But yeah. my point is this. Trinidad and Tobago, this audience here, is one of the strongest audience in sports. We have um, Andre's show on Saturday and I think Wednesday night. Very strong audience in sport. But 
after that, what happens? Yeah, yeah. You know, it falls off. Now, here's an here's a, a, a even going further back to, than that. So I remember having a discussion with Michael Phillip, um, and he had he was part of a presentation that TTOC did some years ago. It could be about, about five years ago. Where he made the point that for him in his marketing, what he had noticed was that the marketing managers at companies that he would go to to ask or to find out or to, to investigate about marketing his sport and, you know, doing a cycling or whatever and, you know, getting sponsorship, that they did not know about sports. They were not sports-oriented. They were not sports-biased, but they were people that had gone to FET. Yeah, so they, yeah. And they know about party. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were, they, there was a trend happening where he said more and more of them could relate to the, the, the soccer and the FET and the this and the that, but they couldn't relate to sports. And I ask somebody, and I've, I will ask the, the general public, are we killing sports beginning at the school level by not having it being as big as a, a thing as it should be? Because... What's that private school sports in Jamaica? Teachers don't want sweaty boys in the classroom. Yeah, right? So PE has, has been in the decline. There are some schools that don't have a sports day, but there are many schools that have a soccer day a carnival fete, a jump up, a next party later in the year to raise funds, and then a third party for Christmas and one in between. Why it is that there aren't, you know, so, what is the, why, why are we not focusing on sport? And, wh and why are we not seeing the damage it's doing? Or the lack of focus. You all remember the Kiskidi school tour? Yes. yes right. Yes. And then remember after Kiskidi folded, they continued with the Soka school tour. Mm -hmm. Names like Destra, everybody, they came out of that school tour. Mm -hmm. Third base still talks about that school tour made his career. So what happens is, when are we going to see a sports school no. tour? When are we going to say, all right, you know what? Neil in the country. Um, yeah, we have Nico, Sean, Nico everybody. Let me put them out. Yeah. Let me carry them out. Mm -hmm. And actually, I had a program that, that would have touched on that with athletics, but I ain't going to get into that. Yet. You know, why, why we don't have, you know, right now, we, we, we have great cricketers, Kyron Pollard, Evan Lewis, um, Sunil Narang. Oh, wait, hold on. But can we afford those cricketers? Because the cricketers making 750,000 yeah, US a year yeah, in make, one league. Yeah. In one league. My, so can, can, can Brands afford to We have great cricketers. cricketers. We have great footballers, young footballers. We are not making these people heroes of our nation. We, and, and none of the, none of the sporting bodies, none of the corporate bodies are trying to find a way to do that. So it's not happening, and hence we end up with, you go to a market, you go to a marketing manager at a company, they're only interested in if that is a FET, mm -hmm. and if it's not a FET, well, we ain't see how we go make money, and that's why you're seeing Nidia Blackburn yeah, but you see more too, than... As, as I, I, I did FET promotions as well, right? So what happens is, if you go to a sponsor, you go to a rum or a brewery product or whatever. Their part of their sponsor, sponsorship is in their product. I agree. Right? So you have a policy, a sports policy, where you cannot sell certain types of products yeah. in a sports meet. Yeah, so they look at so, so yeah. obviously yeah, that, but that, that only eliminates a few. I mean, we that have... That eliminates a few, but it eliminates the highest spending segment yeah. in the and market. Agreed. But there are many more, and I, I think we need to Just start Chris, let, me, let, me, let me finish the point I was trying to make here, right? The point is that for an event like a boat ride, you might have 500 people on a boat ride, everybody coming to get drunk. So you go and drink out the whole stock, so you're getting that sponsorship, and every week they do three, four, five of them boat rides, a sponsor turning it over. When you go to a sports meet, everybody bringing a cooler, Everybody wrapping if they, they sandwich and so, foil so, and so, a pack so juice in, and a in, cooler. In words, what, what you're trying to say here now is that I sponsor a FET because I know if I give you 10,000... 5,000 is, is sales. It's sales, but for a sports day, I ain't getting back... No, salt. No, 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 yeah, salt. No, yeah. Yeah. Salt. I remember a time I had a, a major brand's canned juice drink sponsoring my basketball tournament. And they were very upset that I didn't want to take any product. 
I said, yes, because I know the profile of my audience. Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy any drinks. Mm -hmm. They were like, nah, 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 nah. And this was the Easter weekend. I was in, in, in the Jean Beer Complex. And in the stadium, it was the Kerfter Games. And for the two events, they probably sold maybe less than maybe five cases of juice for both events. My event, they come, they set up a thing, and I said, I told you all you're not going to sell anything here, you know. But I personally took out money, and I bought a case of juice, and I gave it to my team, which we want, keep with trim, no respect. But anyhow, the point is this. The, the audience dynamics are very, very different for sport and for entertainment. So this art and culture, even in the minister, finance minister um, budget, he's given 150,000, I'm um, sorry, now 150,000, 150% to art and culture, but it's 100% to sport. Right? And let's work the math here. If I spend $100, I get $100 in tax relief. So I cancel off. That, I spend 100 to get 100 that's zero. So if you have 150%, mm. it means that you spend 100 you claim on 50 mm. and 30% of the saving, which is $50, is $15, George. Mm. So you have to spend every $100 you spend, you're saving 15? Who wants that math? So but, obviously but there has it, to be something else in it. Yeah, but if you look at it, how do these athletes who represent you and Tobago, how do they manage by what can be done by a, by a corporation and Tobago or their organization to make sure that these guys are properly well taken care of? Because you're giving sometimes 10, 15 years of your, 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 life. your, your life in the sport. Yeah. I think the right? first, the first then, thing needs to be when they are athletes, because that, that is one of the biggest problems we have. When they are current athletes, they should not be, they, they should not find themselves in situations where they are hand to mouth. Um, mm. We have current athletes that are hand to mouth. So they are attempting to represent Trinidad and Tobago today and are hand to mouth. And we need to we need to work around that. We need to find a way that that doesn't exist because it doesn't make sense being an athlete and then you spend your entire 15 years hand to mouth being an athlete and then when you're done, you're still in debt. You're in debt for another 15 years after, in some cases, because you rack up so much. If we go back to the statement Brian made where he asked him the, 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 the sports administrators to sacrifice their books. Only a couple of, of, of federations, only a couple of, of federations get those perks. Yeah. And, for, and to, to, sac, to say that sacrifice... That's a few get, thousand dollars. That's they, small money. They get money funding for organizational improvements. Yeah. To pay staff, to pay rent, to pay yeah. utilities, etc. That is separate and apart from the, the flying budget. I have budget. it in the bucket. I pocket change. Right? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I pocket right? change, George. Pocket so when you change. see FIFA flying or, 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 or TTFA flying or NGAs flying, that money is separate and apart. You cannot just convert that money into a coach or somebody getting yeah, more yeah. packed juice at, at practice. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? What our biggest problem is that the government has taken this grandfather, godfather rule in sport, and it has not worked. Yeah. And what is what is more dangerous is that now that their revenues are, are, are constrained because of the lack of um, the low oil and energy prices, they are now saying, well, boy, we not no money, boy, hard luck there, boy, turning it over to a, a, a private sector um, incentive that is not functioning in a right way. What we need to see is sport investment incentives. What we need to see is um, a handing over, whether it is phased out or whether it is that you say you use a pilot project with the, the, um, the cycling velodrome, hand it over. Because they don't even maintain it anyway. So if the Cycling Federation don't maintain it, we're still in the same place, yeah. right? So hand it over to them so that they can now put up a, a name and rights on the, the, the Clinton, put up a... a um, there you go. That's it. what they call the place. I know, I know. That's Clinton, what they call it, the Clinton. Right? Put up a name and rights. Put up Emirates. Let Emirates get a little three, four million dollars a year. They could, let me do something serious with it. But they're not doing that. So the godfather is saying, you ain't getting no money, but we're also preventing you from, from getting any money. money. And, and so 
you talk about Brian Lewis, and Brian Lewis and I were having a, a WhatsApp chat, and we were talking about the TTOC AGM, which would have been held this weekend, gone, yeah. I believe, right? And coming out of it, I read an, in the article, and that's why I kind of, uh, and I messaged Brian, he was saying that they, um, they have converted the 10 for 24 fund. Right. Into, um, into, a, 10 goals, sorry, for. into another name, right? And it's, it's going to be more like a continual fund. I can't remember the name now, Brian. Please excuse me. Yeah, it's somewhere right. here. Hold my on. Notes, my notes the said, TTO Foundation. Right, the TTO which, Foundation. Which, which, which in an effort to better financially support the athletes. Right. And that's supposed to be on my Very commendable. Year end. Right. And I said to him, you know what would be nice? That... Um, we take one lotto draw out of the hundred that we have in a year, and one is given that money that comes from one lotto draw is donated directly to that fund. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that's been a difficult conversation. And I said, you know what's the interesting part about that? That that conversation is difficult. Right. Because that conversation should never be difficult. UK sports is off. NLCB talking. should have, with all due respect to NLCB, should have no problem saying, y'all want one? Let's make it happen. Let's find a way to make one lotto draw, mm -hmm. one lotto draw, go straight to, to that foundation so that athletes can at least know that once a year, or the TTOC know there's an influx of money once a year that they can deal with. But... The, the, yeah. As he's saying, U UK, British sports runs by a UK yeah. lotto. The UK um, sports model is often touted as the most progressive non-professional sports investment program. What, where is the money coming from? A lotto. UK sports lotteries, lotto. right? If you look at cycling, professional cycling, at least four teams are sponsored by their national lotteries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have... We, we know the best practices, you know. We just have studiously ignored those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And we have, uh, we have imagined ourselves into this kind of business model where these fantasy elements could work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, tax, the tax shelter and the tax relief incentive has not worked. Increasing it is not going to work. We have to look at other ways to incentivize it. We were talking about a, a sports and technology-based um, idea that I had. Will that qualify for the tax, intense, uh, tax incentives of tech companies under this thing? Mm. Once again, it's a tax thing. So all of these fiscal measures, no, 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 no. We need money, investment. We need people to come in and say, hey, Trinidad and Tobago is a great place for me to park three, four, five hundred million U.S. dollars. That's where we need to see this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. We, are we marketing it? No. Look, at, look at something like this. I would Hello. love to see Tanil Campbell just on a ride because she's from deep in South, beautiful countryside, just on a ride with a, a GoPro camera, just talking and just riding through, do a little warp, zoom, whatever, whatever. Give, give Tanil a little, $1 million to so just do that ride there. And, and she will now, every time she raised, because remember what the, the Giro women? What was happening? You were saying Marshall. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Tennille Campbell gave the organizers her playlist, and Marshall, Bungie, everybody was on that playlist. Yeah. So for three medal presentations, one more pause reason, it was Marshall. Yep. We can't pay for that. Yeah. But we can pay Tennille to encourage Tennille to continue doing what she's doing. Mm -hmm. We're not, we not, we not taking all the opportunities. We're not seeing it. So for me, I think, you know, I know there's the last comments I've seen <laughs> time going. <laughs> yeah. But we need, we need to take a very different approach to what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. we, we have From policy, go right back yeah, down. Yeah, go right back down. Corporate, um, you know, the, the management of, of athletes. All of that has to have a different philosophy. It the classroom. Needs, it needs and any classroom. We need to have sport come in from the from the bottom all the way up. And if we don't do that, we're Ladies not gonna we're not gonna make progress. Let me say thank you again. Anytime, anytime, George. Anytime. 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 That things turn around for 2021. 20, we know nothing's gonna happen in 2020. We're going wrong or wrong about George. Let's hope <laughs> something change. Yeah, for right. sure, for sure. Viewers, if you missed any part of this program, remember there's a free tomorrow at 1 p.m. and also on Saturday at 1 p.m. I want to thank Chris and Dennis for coming down here and sharing their thoughts with us. And we ask you to observe all the protocols, be safe, and I'll see you next week Tuesday. Same time, same channel. Yeah. Be blessed.